Now let's try making a level ourselves. I'm just gonna go in here and I'm gonna create a medium sized world for us, just enough for this demo. So we wanted building to be a fun activity and not feel like hard work or labor. It should just be fun, just like um, doodling on a piece of paper or playing with Lego with a Play-Doh. It's not just about completing it as quickly as possible. It's just fun to do. We wanted to see if we could recreate that feeling in here while you're actually creating games. So even when I'm building things, I'm still controlling my avatar, running around on a landscape, but I have a few extra tricks. First of all, I've got a jetpack, which is very handy for getting around. And I've got three tools that I can use to shape the world. First, let's take out our cursor. So as you can see, she's holding her own controller now there, and I'm controlling the end point of a cable. And what I can do is I can move this around with a mouse, very simple. And by pressing the left mouse button, I can add to the world, and the right mouse button deletes from the world. When we do these interactions, we shoot off past the station, we make rumble signs, all kinds of little details to make it feel good. I'm gonna grab a slightly larger brush, and I'm gonna sculpt away for a second here. So like this, I can basically do this in real time. There's no offline calculation. We calculate the shadows, the collisions, the surfaces, everything just in real time, right away. So what I'm gonna do now is um, I'm gonna make a little world for us. I'm gonna try and make some gameplay inside it. I'm gonna grab a brush like this rough cylinder. I don't really have a plan, I'm just gonna doodle away. But I actually think that's one of the strengths of the tool. You don't need to sit down with blueprints and everything sorted out. You can just start away and sooner or later an idea will occur to you. As I mentioned before, it's not just a height field, it is a real 3D, so we can make any shape we want, we can rub it down, we can go around in the air, we can do whatever we want. I'm just gonna delete this thing again, just to make our level a little bit nicer. So, I'm just gonna sculpt this very quickly. All I'm doing is moving the mouse around, holding down the left mouse button to add stuff, and the right mouse button to delete stuff. So anyone can do this, you don't need to be an expert. I'm doing it fast for the purpose of the demo, but you can do it at a pace that you're comfortable with. Also, when I delete the ground, I get water. So down here, we actually get, um, Water, we can drag across the level. Let's just make a little lake here, for example. And perhaps some mountains around on the side. So I'm gonna go back up and uh, make some things here, like this. And just polish it a little bit, perhaps with this mountain foot. Go in and add a few of those here, there. So, we've got a lake, we've got some landscape. Let's go back to our avatar. Oh, she filled the water meanwhile. Let's uh, get around. There we go. So it's beginning to look like a game world. It's a small one for the purpose of this demo, but you can see it's a real game world, but it looks a little bit uniform. It's all just sandy beach. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and use the second tool to paint on all these surfaces. And basically, I've got a palette of different tools here that I control just the same way. I move the mouse around and I press the button and start painting with the material. And when I do that, we change the material, we change the texture surface, we change the properties and we shoot up vegetation or whatever is relevant for that material type. So it's very, very easy to go in and quickly paint the world to make it look the way you want your level to look. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the menu and I'm going to set up a palette of different materials. Um, let's have uh, some algae rock and some jungle orchids, perhaps uh, what else? We've got some puppies and perhaps some rough sand we can make a track with. So we've got a selection of materials here. So I could go ahead and I could paint uh, jungle vegetation everywhere. I'm going to do a little trick. I'm basically going to take the jungle vegetation, I think it's uh, there, and drag it into the slot where I had the beach sand just to replace it everywhere. So very, very quickly we're getting to a nice little world here. So um, for this level we're building, let's say the purpose is to uh, it's going to start over here. You have to make it down to the water and get across and you're going to end up over here. So that's a little level. So let's paint a path that goes through the level with this material, for example. I'm just going to go in and lay down a little path there. I'll do the same over here on the other side. There you go. So we got a little path, and um, that's a good start. Let's add some flowers just to pretty up the scene a little bit. Have some flowers there, and uh, a bit over here. We have some of this uh, dry rock somewhere as well. I think this side is a little bit more rocky. Just gonna add a little a few details here and there. So, very, very quickly, we're getting a pretty neat level. It's really beginning to look the kind of levels we used to play in action adventure games. And it's very easy to forget, this is just inside the browser. I'm not using any other tools that go into a web page and using what it gives me. And I can take this level, I can save it to the cloud, I can come back from any other machine and continue my work from there. I don't need to finish it all now. It is just available there. So, 
What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to move on to the third tool where we add some gameplay to this world. It's called the prop tool. We have literally thousands of different props available inside the game. Everything from houses to decorations to ships to uh, platforms to gates, doors, levers, buttons, traps, all kinds of things. Um, there's all into different themes like a pirate theme, a colonial theme, a jungle theme. There's um, a mercenary theme, an explorer theme. And we'll be unveiling many more themes down the road um, from here. For now, let's just create a small pirate world. For example, we can say that you have to end over by this house. So I'm gonna, that was the starting point, so the house should be over here. So I'm gonna take the house, I'm just gonna put it in. Again, I'm moving around with the mouse, and I'm gonna place it down, say, here. Immediately, we get the house that is inside the scene with textures, collision, and everything. Let's add a few details to it, like a uh, second wing on this side, perhaps. I'm just gonna take this and put it in, intersect it into what's already there, like uh, this. And we should get a chimney. So the chimney goes here, and uh, perhaps this kind of elevated wing that overlooks the water. That would be kind of cool. There we go. So just with a few simple props that I put together, we created a pretty neat looking house. I think we need to raise that chimney a little bit, don't we? So we can grab the chimney and put it up a little bit. A pretty neat looking house inside our scene. It's just using the props that are available. So, so far so good. Let's uh, define where you start this level. I'm going to use a gameplay prop, which is basically a prop that you don't see when you play the game, but it's used to set up the actual game itself. I'm going to grab the starting point and put it over here and say, this is where you should start this level. Uh, we're facing that direction. And uh, I'm going to grab this camera and say, when you start the level, the camera should be over here. At any point, I can press F10, we can test the level. So there we are at the starting point with the camera I specified. We can run down the path, we can look around, we can see, all right, the house is over there, we need to find a way to get there. So let's fix that uh, with a bit of platforming. We've got a, a neat little lake here, so perhaps we can make some platforms that go across the lake. Uh, let's do a search for a scaffolding. There we go. So I'm gonna grab this, uh, and I'm gonna place it into the water. So we get a few of these to jump across on. Right. There we go, now we have a way to get across. So, what we really need is some danger as well. I'm gonna grab some enemies and put them in over here so we get to fight a little bit. So, um, let's go back to pirate world, see what we've got here. Uh, that's a pirate, I'm gonna put him in, face in that direction, he should be there. And I'm gonna grab this other guy and put him over here. And perhaps this bomb thrower should be in the flower bed. So we got a few guys to fight there. Um, now that we got them, we have to get a weapon of some sort. So uh, let's place a weapon out on this uh, platform. Say, a cutlass. I'm gonna put GoPro in, just place it here, so it's roughly on top of it. See, there it is. So we got a weapon to pick up on our way there. So, we got some platforming, we got some enemies, we got a weapon to fight them with. Um, we need a way to finish the level. So, let's say you have to run out behind the uh, house here. So I'm gonna go into gameplay props, so I'm gonna pick a level finishing prop and just place it down on this side like this. When you get to that one, the level will finish, and all we really need now is a treasure to collect. So let's find it. Oh, sorry. Uh, go in there and find that. Oh, I'm not doing that. Find a chest. There we go. So I'm gonna take this chest and I'm gonna place it here. So with this chest, I placed a little bit in the air, as you can see. I could do it as we did with the other objects, take it and just pull it down. But I can also enable physics, and it'll bounce against the world. So you can actually stack objects on top of each other exactly as they're supposed to be resting with the scene. It's very easy to do these things in the game, and make the kind of setup you want. So, uh, we've got the chest. I'm gonna right-click it and open its properties and customize it. I want our chest to contain uh, 20 silver pickups and uh, let's say 10 gold pickups. We can even put items and equipment inside it if that's what we wanted. But I think actually just some amount of gold is, is a good, good thing for us here. So we're almost done. We've got a little level. It's looking pretty good, but it's quite quiet. So uh, let us uh, grab a music machine. There we go. I'm going to stick in a music machine. I'm going to open it. We have a lot of tracks already available to put into different categories. Let's go and pick a joyful track like the high seas track here. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the ambience of this level because it's perhaps a little bit cheerful for the kind of dangerous level we've created. So I'm going to open up the world uh, settings, I'm going to grab the backdrop and say perhaps this should be a starry night instead. Or um, perhaps it should be like a desert sun. It actually looks kind of okay. Uh, let's maybe pull on to the desert sun. Let's uh, change the color correction. 
we yeah. make the game paint through sepia tone and run it through both factions or perhaps slightly newer with a vintage look or the sea uh, gold. It's kind of different. Uh, that's not the right for this. Let's try something like uh, perhaps a moody look. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to place the sun. Everything is calculated in real time. So we get some shadows falling across our path there. I'm going to raise the sun a little bit in the scene. There we are. Got a pretty neat level. Let's try and play it. There I am. Let's see if I can do these jumps. Oh, there. The enemy is over there. Got to get the weapon. by playing it and uh, liking it. So there we go. That's basically the essence of Game Club. It's a little world online where you can create your own levels, large or small, or whatever you feel like doing with the tools. Share them with the world and have everyone come and play your things. And people are doing that. We have people in the club space now that are creating all kinds of amazing stuff. One of the most recent things is that they've discovered we're at E3. So they've started pushing out levels uh, like Hello E3 or Check This Out, hoping to get them shown here at E3. So uh, let's actually try one of them and see what it's like. Let's try this one.